Don't you just love a good trading range? Home, home on the range. <laughs> I guess I need a new dad joke of the day segment or something. <laughs> Hi, this is Tim from TradingStrategyGuides.com. So, how mysterious am I being with my video titles? I know, I kind of give it away with the thumbnail images, don't I? <laughs> I guess I'm just not an international man of mystery, or whatever. I'm probably not even an interstate man of mystery. Once again, I want to apologize for my video being late on Friday. I promised I would fix that, and I am in the process of doing it. I realized that my editing and rendering process was taking way <laughs> too long, and it's because my computer is just getting old. And, you know, I just hate setting up new computers, but <laughs> computers are just not expensive these days, you know? I, it just the time it takes to set up a new computer is just, ugh. But I, I do remember a 286 computer I bought back in like 1986 or something that cost me $4,500 and it didn't even have a color screen on it. Oh well, anyway, my laptop is just fine for trading, but editing and rendering videos is a lot more processor intensive. So I got a new computer and I should have it all set up for Wednesday's video. So hopefully today's video won't be late, because I started it way early this time. And I'm sure a new computer is going to improve the whole process. So thanks for bearing with me on this. Not much happened over the weekend. A lot almost happened, though. We'll take a look at that. Plus a new factoid of the day, and then the mysterious stock trade setup. Then we'll get into today's trading maxim. Grab a coffee and loiter with me for a while. Remember to click the subscribe button and hit that bell so you don't miss any of our trading goodness. Let's zoom through a few charts here. The US dollar Japanese yen pair hit our target the way it's supposed to, right here on the very next day after the entry. Now it's sort of looking consolidating right here with the volume dropping off and all, but it's really too soon to tell about that. Still holding the second half right here at break even. Bitcoin closed below the range right here on Sunday, but it did it on 74% volume. So no trade here. Nothing to see. Move along. I'll keep watching for a way to get in this. I think there's more downside to come. I don't listen to the chatter on the internet too often. Uh, at least I don't make decisions based on it. How, how can you help but listen to it, you know? But the talk is that $6,500 is a good buy and hold spot for Bitcoin. I guess we'll figure that out if it gets there. An Ethereum Classic is just a copycat. It dropped below the triangle right here on Sunday. Again, on not enough volume, 63% right here, so no trade on this one as well. I'll consider redrawing this triangle if the volume and volatility continue to decline. I'll let you know what I do. Well, sheesh, that was quick. Just didn't take long to go through three charts, I guess, huh? All right, let's take a look at the factoid of the day. How many of you miss your old turntables? Yeah, those turntables. I'm not sure if I do or not. I mean, you guys know I'm no spring chicken. Uh, in fact, I went to college in the 70s. Go Clemson, by the way. And my roommate, my sophomore year, taught me what it meant to be an audiophile. And yes, I became a serious sound snob from then on. By the way, thanks, Barry. All your training has stuck, man. <laughs> so the question is, can I actually tell the difference between a digital recording and analog vinyl? Well, I guess so. Usually the vinyl just sounds scratchy. <laughs> Seriously, the answer is way more complex than that because it depends on all the circumstances. But I've been sort of surprised when I saw that vinyl recordings and actual photo film are making comebacks. I suppose there's a sort of nostalgia associated with them, the way I like looking at stereoscopes and later on viewmasters as a kid. But I'm probably just too convenience-oriented to go back to vinyl recordings and film. 
It's just too easy to have all this stuff on a device in my pocket instead. Plus, does anybody remember waiting for your pictures to come back from the processor only to find out that they all sucked? <laughs> yeah, I've been there, done that. Here's the scoop. Revenue from vinyl recordings has been trending up for 15 years and are close to becoming the largest revenue source from physical sales in the music industry. Several of the music artists that I like to follow are releasing vinyl albums. And of course, photo film types that we haven't seen in years are also returning. I guess the question is, why? And you know what? Why not 8-track tapes because they were the bomb when I was 20, right? <laughs> Well, some researchers say that third-generation tech, like digital music and photos, can help rejuvenate first-generation tech, like vinyl and film, if the newest products lack something valuable that the originals offer. I'm assuming they're referring to something other than nostalgia. I've definitely noticed a resurgence in everything that was a thing when I was a kid. Read that as anything mid-century modern. All of this seems to be resulting in stagnant CD sales, which doesn't surprise me because lossless digital audio formats played from digital devices have at least as much quality as a CD and is way more convenient to carry. Uh, but digital camera shipments seem to be declining as well. But that could just be because of the proliferation of decent quality cameras on the hunk of tech we carry around in our pockets. So, with absolutely no research to back up my assumptions, in other words, just like any other keyboard warrior, I believe this is more about nostalgia than anything else, and my kids' grandkids will be choosing MP3s and JPEGs over whatever the reigning formats are in 2070, right? Hat tip to the hustle for this bit of newsiness. I'll put links to all this stuff below for anyone interested in following up on it. Oh, and comment below what tech you prefer for your audio and visual pleasure. Feel free to tell me I have no idea what I'm talking about because maybe that's true. <laughs> okay, the moment you've all been waiting for. The big reveal. You guessed it, today's stock is good old Kohl's. I know there were no clues out there for you to tell, but I know you guys are pretty sharp. <laughs> for those of you unfamiliar, Kohl's is an American department store chain first opened as a corner grocery store in 1927 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. With 1,158 locations, they can boast now that they are the largest department store chain in the U.S. They are traded as KSS on the New York Stock Exchange, and they're an S&P 500 component. And here's what I like about Kohl's right now. This trading range. Isn't that nice? We've got alternating touches right up here, right down here, back here, and back here at the top of 54 and the bottom of the range of 44.25. Remember, don't look for perfection in these patterns because it just ain't there. And you can see that the range is confirmed with a decline in volume and a decline in volatility right here. And that's just an indication of trader boredom. They're bored with this range. They're ready for this thing to break in one direction or the other. Of course, the volatility is represented by the ATR, or average true range, which is simply an average of the length of the last 14 candles. So, here's the plan. We will simply buy a daily close above the range, or above 54. We will sell a daily close below the range, or below 44.25. On the breaking candle, to enter a full-size position, we want to see a volume bar that reaches all the way up to the volume average right here. If it doesn't reach the average, but does at least reach 75% of the average volume, you can open a half-size position to reduce risk. To calculate that percentage, you take the volume, divide it by the volume average, and you should get at least 0.75 from that. If you don't get 0.75, then stand aside and watch the trade go by, just like we did on Bitcoin and Ethereum Classic yesterday. The stop loss is one and a half times the ATR, and your first target is one times the ATR. So on the breaking candle, you look at your ATR right here, you multiply that by one and a half, and you measure that amount behind the entry, not behind the range, but behind the entry. And then you take one ATR and 
calculate that ahead of the entry. If after entering the trade we get a candle that closes back inside the range, we will take the loss right then and not wait for it to hit the stop loss. Our intention is that a breakout from these patterns should be explosive and hit our target fairly quickly, kind of like the dollar yen did last week. If the momentum goes away, we want to shut the trade down without taking a full stop if possible. When the price hits our first target, we will close half the position for profit and set the stop loss to break even on the remainder. We will then follow stops as price moves in our direction until the market takes us out. Now, Typically I do this with two positions. The first position has a hard stop loss and a hard take profit at the appropriate prices and the second position has a hard stop loss and no take profit on it. I will also only risk 2% of my account on each trade because no single trade should make or break you. And that's the setup today on Kohl's. I'm going to tell you this and tell you this. I am not trying to tell you what to do. I am just telling you how I handle these trades. If you want more details about what I do, look below this video for a link to my trade management video. And if you've got your own trade management plan that works for you, please use it. By all means, trading is a very personal thing and things that work for me may not work for you. You have to understand your personal psychology to find the best strategies for your own trading. And as you know, psychology is, in my opinion, the most important part of trading. And the trading maxims are my way of helping to handle my personal psychology. And today we're going to jump into the archive for another one. A maxim is a general truth, fundamental principle, rule of conduct, or proverbial saying. The maxims that I share with you come from all over. The purpose of these maxims is to motivate me to discipline. Discipline in trading as, discipline in trading as well as other areas of my life. I suggest you start your own list of maxims, things that you can say to yourself while you're trading or doing life to make sure that you always do the right thing. Feel free to borrow from my list. Now it's time for the maxim of the day. Trading maxim number 37. There are two kinds of people in this game, humble ones and those who are about to be. <laughs> Logan Gelbrick. <laughs> I love this one. Logan Gelbrick is a functional strength and conditioning coach and former baseball player with the San Diego Padres. So I'm assuming his quote refers to baseball, but it definitely applies to trading for sure. I was one of the lucky ones, and <laughs> you're going to laugh when you hear me say this. I consider myself a lucky one because I lost money early in the trading game. So I got my humility lessons early on. I know folks who made a killing in the market when they first started, and they didn't learn that the market was always right. I tried to make them understand that you just can't go all in, and some of them learned, and some of them have yet to learn. Uh, but as they say in the southern U.S., just don't get too big for your britches. Stay humble and you won't have to eat your words later on. And of course, you won't blow out your account later on either. Remember our Kohl's trade plan here. We're going to buy a daily close above the range or above 54, or sell a daily close below the range or below 44.25. If the volume is not quite average, go half size as long as it's at least 75% of the average. Your stop loss is one and a half times the ATR, and your first target is one times the ATR. And remember to click the link below to the trade management video for more details. Hey, sign up for my Trading Picks email list so you don't miss any of my trades. I'll be sending out oh, three or four trading picks a week, everything from stocks to futures to cryptos to Forex, and you'll be the first to see them. Best thing about this is it's free. Be sure to come back to Trading Strategy Guide's YouTube channel every week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time for my new videos. We'll have a nice trade set up or two on each one and maybe some extra Q&A and training on Wednesdays. Don't hesitate to ask any questions you may have. I try to answer questions as quickly as possible. And remember, the only stupid question is the unasked one. Follow me on Twitter. I'll put my Twitter link below. Tell your friends about us and help us make this the best trading channel on the internet. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and don't forget to hit the thumbs up below. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.